Hey guys, Mark again from Epic Motorcycle Adventures. So I'm out on a test ride of the BMW S1000XR. This is my third test ride on an S1000XR. First time was when it first came out. The second time was last year, 2017. And obviously today we're into September 2018. So why so many test rides? The first time I didn't really get on it, on with it. Um, it was tall. I found it tall for myself. Um, the riding position was weird. Buzzy handlebars at a certain speed. Fu buzzy foot pegs. However, it's got that massively addictive acceleration of the S1000RR engine, albeit detuned. But but it's still got that. That epic song, that epic noise that an S1000R makes when it's on full chat. And then when you roll off the throttle, you've got all the backfiring and popping and burbling on the overrun. Uh, second test ride, so the updated version. I enjoyed it, but still it was an alien riding position. I don't know if that's what put, put me off or, or anything. Or the, or the route that I rode, but I, I still, it still wasn't 100%. There still was something about the bike that I didn't get on with, didn't like. It went, it steers, and it, and it still goes, and it still steers. Um, but I've stepped on it today, after 17 months of owning a, a GS1200 Rally, which I love to bits, that bike. Yeah, I love the, uh, my GS Rally to bits. I've been on some <laughs> random adventures. We've been to Portugal, we've been some off-roading and stuff like that. It goes well, the GS, it steers well. But stepping onto this versus having a GS, the size difference, this feels tiny compared with the GS. And the sheer get up and go of it is, I'm not going to say mind bending because I've rode 200 brake horsepower motorbikes before. But they not, they're, they're just, just <laughs> the acceleration difference, the, the way it makes power compared with the, um, the Boxer Twin and Inline 4, I just love, I'm addicted to that kind of that kind of sensation and it's been a while since I've rode something with this much power this much get up and go and uh, it makes you crave more of it um, so I'm on the Dartmoor Road or the, Elver the Elverton Road from Plimpton and um, I'm going to go over to Cadover Bridge and hopefully there's nobody there we can park it up in the car park and we can have a little look at the bad boy. Just want to keep rolling on and off the throttle. Fifth gear roll on is brilliant. This bridge, let's have a check of the car park. The car park is empty, so I'm gonna get in there. Well, it is. I'm still short, and this thing leans over so much compared with the GS. But uh, 
Okay, let's get the other camera out. It's got a center stand as well. Hey guys, Mark from EpicMotorcycleAdventures.com um, Today I've got a test ride on the BMW S1000XR um, I've just parked over down near Cadover Bridge um, I'm in Dartmoor at the moment and yeah I've got, got this bad boy for a few hours so let's have a think so this isn't my first rodeo on the S1000XR um, I had a go in the first Evolution when it came out uh, a few years ago. I was um, I owned a BMW S1000R at the time, and I didn't really get on with it. I found it tall, um, quite f buzzy, flighty, and ugly. Um, BMW are notorious for not making pretty bikes, although some of the R9Ts are they're quite cute. Um, so yeah, S1000XR. The second version I had to go on, so this is the updated version, it's got um, rubber on the handlebars to stop them from being so buzzy and the foot pegs are a little bit less buzzy, um, but still I was an owner of an S1000RR and I had the latest version, so a 2015 model it was at the time, um, and this, it's still the same model that you would buy now, they've just Euro Ford it. And again, I didn't really get on with the S1000XR, but I was hell-bent on, I think, eventually buying a GS, um, for various reasons. However, today, um, I've come off owning, or still owning, obviously, the GS. I love my GS Rally. We've been on some um, random adventures, some we got lost with a sat-nav, and the GS worked well. Um, but today, I'm really digging the XR. It's still not the prettiest bike in the box. Um, it is better looking in some of the orange bikes that you see. Um, however, in the motorsports colours, I'm a little bit partial to it. But the biggest thing that I'm the biggest thing that I'm digging is just the power. I've come from the GS, which has probably got about 100 horsepower at the back wheel. This has got 165, so it's down on what I'm. I had on the S1000RR, but when you've been riding something that has got 100 horsepower at the back wheel, uh, the GS is down for 125 at the crank, but um, we know you lose a lot with the, um, the shaft drive, but this thing makes power amazingly. It sounds amazing. Um, the exhaust. So the exhaust is not the prettiest can in the box. However, you could soon change that. The motorsport colours make it look a lot better than than the the standard red that you would get from BMW or the or the white one. Um, but it looks cool, and um, I'm going to start it up for you so you can have a little listen. He says. standard exhaust on it is pretty loud it's pretty um, aggressive it sounds amazing um, let's switch that off before we um, frighten all the sheep and the wildlife <laughs> so what do I think you know I'm glad I've gave it a third a third dance a third third encounter because I'm actually swayed by it it is mega it is different to ride in the GS, it's, it's not as planted, there's so much mechanical grip on the GS, um, especially even with the, uh, the tyres I run, with the, the knobbly tyres, 
this we're back to a smaller front wheel so it turns in a little bit sharper um, riding position is is good it's comfortable i'm not keen on the way the handlebars roll forwards towards you and i'd like to be able to slide them forwards in in the headstock but yeah i'm actually digging it so i'm gonna get the drone out take a few aerial thoughts around here and then we'll crack on with the ride see you in a minute Okay, so whoa. Okay, so you could get yourself into a lot of trouble with this bike. <laughs> it's light, it's agile. Front wheel goes light really easily. And it's got an abundance of power, which is quite addictive to be honest. Um, still a bit buzzy um, com compared with uh, any other bike that I've rode, uh, which is bizarre because I've I commented on this before. It's, it's the same engine as the S1000RR. The S1000RR is, to me, wasn't buzzy, um, so there's something not quite right in the design whether it's oh my god listen to that whether it's the way it's mounted in the frame or just at a certain rev range everything just resonates and um, and it buzzes your hands which after a while could get a little bit pins and needly that's a technical term by the way um, so this bike like I say third third test ride on one and um, like I say I'm s compared with the first two attempts on it I'm sold um, I love it um, would I trade my GS in I don't know because the GS is such an all-purpose bike this feels just like an upright sports bike. So if I had it, I wouldn't be able to take it off road. Um, and some of the roads that I ride on a regular basis will be not out of bounds, but they'll be hard work. This is why I've come down this road, because this bike is designed for fast sweeping roads, like um, the B500 in Germany. Whereas this, tight, technical, sheep littered everywhere. Um, <laughs> littered, like they've just been tossed out the back of a van or something. Um, makes this hard bike work. Um, but it is more than capable. So it is a bit flighty, you get, you get a little bit... Um, throttle response is mega, mega quick and it's mega light throttle action. So, it's definitely not a beginner's bike. <laughs> and it does feel, 
when I had the RRs, it felt like a step backwards, uh, power-wise, um, riding position-wise, obviously. This is a step forwards, so to speak, on the GS. And you got, like I say, even, it's a, even though it's only got 165 horsepower, it makes it so quickly. And there's just that V, sorry, not V. That inline four is just so strong at the bottom end. I haven't been anywhere near the top end of this bike. You, well, you, you'd be stupid to try and attempt it on this road. Um, it'd be crazy to attempt it on any road, really, apart from a motorway, because it's so fast. But apart from that buzz, which isn't too bad right now, I could have one of these. I'd be sold. Yeah, I, when I was at the car park earlier, I got the drone out, took some photos of the bike, took some photos of the bridge and a couple of the scenery, and um, it was quiet, there's nobody there in the car park. There's um, a few people now starting to turn up, that's why I left the car park. Um, a few people turning up, to go hiking by the looks of it. Like I say, sheep are littered everywhere, so you've got to watch what you're doing around here. What you doing? You get it? Uh, I only realised I've got a joke in there after I said it, so it wasn't purpose. Yeah, I'm definitely um, starting to like this bike. It's, it's taken, like I say, it's taken me three test rides on one over three different years to um, get the hang of it. Like I say, going, stepping from a sports bike to this, um, it wasn't for me. 17 months on a GS rally. Look at that view, guys. Look at that. There's Plymouth in there and the breakwater. You might not be able to see it, but that's Plymouth and the breakwater. Stunning, stunning view from up here. I thoroughly enjoyed. I, I'm gonna say that if, if I was in the bar, mar, market, if I was in the market for another bike, this would be high on the options list. It would basically stop me from going off-roading though. So the dilemma would be sell the GS buy this and then get something more off-road bias, off-road friendly. Listen to that noise! They yeah, get something more off-road friendly, smaller capacity, lighter weight, cheaper. Biggest test for me to have one of these, this is me thinking out loud, biggest test would be to take it on one, a weekend away in Wales. Because Wales is, for me, is, it's a brilliant riding place, it's a brilliant place to ride. The scenery is stunning, but the roads are amazing. Like I say, it would. Having one of these would stop me from off-roading on it without the risk of crashing. It's too much power to take these things off-road. Yes, uh, I'm actually, I actually enjoy this.
wind noise wise I've, I've got peaked helmet on the screen's in the position that it was when I picked it up and the wind noise is okay I feel protected by the uh, wide, massively wide petrol tank it's got some girth on the petrol tank and the uh, little fr fairing at the front So yeah, I definitely have one of these. I've said it about a million times already. Um, it'd just be, where would it fit in my biking, biking life right now? Um, It is hard to work around this road. I've rode this a few times on my on my GS, and because it's bumpy, the suspension's really hard. Um, it is hard to work. But I guess you could uh, live with that when the engine makes so much noise. <laughs> Horse-drawn vehicles and animals. I've got a 165 horse-drawn vehicle here. So it's beautiful, this little um, lake. This is a new road. Um, yeah, it's beautiful around here. lag there on the up change. I was a little bit sneaky so as I changed up using the um, the auto blipper there was just a little drag it didn't lurch forwards it didn't go forwards it sort of paused just paused in the acceleration hopefully that car stays put Ergonomics wise, so don't like the way the handlebars are really close to me. Um, I could lean them forwards a tiny bit in the um, in the headstock. However, you end up having to, to move all your switch gear, which they're all pinned into the handlebars, so you won't be able to rotate them back too much. So there's a sacrifice there. You could always change the handlebars. Um, but again, then the switch gear is not going to be pinned, and you do risk it rotating on the handlebars. Um, what else? Seat's not that uncomfortable. It just keep pushing me forwards um, into the petrol tank. Right in position. My knees are cramped, not cramped up. They are. There are. There is quite a tight tuck. Not sports bike tight, but it's 
there is a big bend in my knees. However, it's not being uncomfortable. I haven't noticed any any uncomfortableness. That's not all, that's not really a word, is it? I just love that automatic that auto down change, no clutch, clutch just down change. Um, because the noise it makes is amazing. It is like a burst of gunfire. Okay, 30 mile an hour speeds. The bike is light, easy to steer. It feels lower than the, the previous versions. I don't know if that's just um, because I'm so used to riding the GS, which is a lot taller. The seat is nice and sculpted. Um, so I'm, I'm selling this bike to myself. Really, I'm selling this bike to myself. I'm not talking myself into buying it. I'm just thinking of all the things that I like. Don't like the clutch lever. It feels like a million miles away from my. I got quite big hands, long fingers, but it feels a long, long way away. That's something you can change, obviously. Um, mirrors work well, actually. The same mirrors as the S1000R. Same mirrors GS. Same glass. Same stem setup. Just they're angled pretty well. Um, they're not the reflection back is not of shoulders or elbows but of the road which is cool what would this bike be like for touring ok so it would get you there in a hurry Yeah, this bike would get you wherever you're going in a hurry. Um, fuel consumption. Okay, it's not reading anything on the info thing. Yeah, I like this bike. I've said it a hundred times now. <laughs> it's taken me a while to get on with it. Um, it's fast, the engine's addictive, it's comfortable. Um, apart from that little bit of buzz, so I'm not feeling it now. It's got all the gear, cruise control, heated grips. Brakes offer a massive amount of feel, front and rear. Purrs up, tick over. So I'm going to check out, guys. It's been an amazing day out on this bike. Um, it's been fun. It's been. Nice little trip up to Dartmoor. It's got some nice photos, hopefully. I'll check them out and post them with this video. Um, okay, and I said it in a review for the 850GS. The new 850. It's new for 2018 850GS. That bike is super, super easy to ride. This bike is super, super easy to ride. Super easy to ride, it's fast as well. So much power. Um, I keep mentioning that. I'm going to check out anyway.